This is Alaska. Its sheer size is staggering. It's home to the largest mountain in America, Denali. From glaciers to wildlife, Alaska is an enchanting place. A place where dreams can still be realized for those who dare to venture into its challenging landscape, where a vanishing lifestyle still exists for a few. This is a story of a few modern-day pioneers who took the leap of faith to pursue their dreams of living off the grid in the remote bush of Alaska. The eyes of the world are all focused on downtown Anchorage, Alaska. For there is no sporting event in the world quite like the last great race. For this is where the ceremonial start of the famed Iditarod sled dog race begins. For anyone who has ever believed in the call of the wild, this is it. Iditarod veteran Ramey Smith has finished the last great race an unprecedented 16 times and is once again facing the 1100 mile journey to Nome. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go! One of the big competitors from Willow. This is Ramey Smith on his way to know Ramey has been called the best closer in Iditarod's history. He is a log builder. He's married to Becca. They're the father of Ava, who is two and a half. Ramey owns a custom log home business, which is operated during the summer months. His principal helping hand and fellow musher is a hardworking young man by the name of Jeff Heeman. Yeah, Jeff, I, I met him quite a few years ago, and... Um, and um, he's really come into his own and um, just been one of my best friends. And... Jeff had been working as a guide for veteran Iditarod musher yeah, Linwood Fiedler, doing sled dog tours on the Godwin Glacier outside of Seward. I met Jeff Heeman through Laura, which is Ramey's little sister, when they were working together on the glacier outside of Seward. I met Jeff up on the glacier working for Linwood Fiedler and um, he recognized the effectiveness of the training methods that I was using and he's like, you know, where does this come from, what does it do, all full of questions and I'm like, this is from my brother Ramey. Um, this is the way that we train dogs, and uh, Jeff's like, well, I, I want to be a part of that. Bring it on. So that was pretty much it. <laughs> uh, I'll truck my dogs out here. I, I actually would it would be a blast to come. I couldn't go as far as you guys, you know, at this point, but it would be fun just to follow you and Oh, it's go such a, a great trail. That would be a blast. Uh, and now it's snowing. Yeah. Now, yay. <laughs> Summer after we got off the glacier, uh, Jeff jumped in head first and started helping Ramey out and next thing you know he's he's the go-to guy he's got it together and I don't know really honestly what Ramey would do without him if he didn't have him because he's just highly effective at everything he does. Yeah like this fat here this is the stuff that's that, you know moose don't really have a whole lot of fat on them but the fat that they have is it's surrounding like their heart and their organs and, and that's what keeps them insulated and warm in the winter time. You know, all that I ever knew about dog mushing when I was getting into it was the Iditarod. You know, following the Iditarod, Linwood Fiedler, Ramey Smith, and kind of, you know, getting uh, familiar with those names. But, uh, you know, just to see the life, you know, to videotape the life and what it kind of takes is hard. You know, every day is an adventure, you know. You got people that live, like, in the city or something, and, you know, they might, this might be, like, their whole big expedition for the month, but we do... An expedition every day, you know, getting water, cooking food, daily upkeep, family life, work life, dogs, and owning your own business. It's, it's, uh, 
it takes a lot of work and a lot of balance and and uh, dogs are happy. Both Jeff and Ramey start training their sled dogs well before the snow falls, usually in the month of August. These guys are brothers here. The typical sled dog team consists of 20 or fewer dogs and are all hooked together on a central line called a gang line. The gang line is fastened to whatever is being pulled, and in this case, it's an old ATV. Early season training usually involves ATVs instead of dog sleds, primarily because of the lack of snow. It is the most common method of training used in Alaska today. ATVs offer a greater control of the dogs, as well as the correct amount of weight to be pulled. Ramey and Jeff often get together and talk about their dogs. She finished with Becca's main leader in the quest. And um, Becca's other main leader is Bishop. That's her, her other pup. That's Charlie's brother. Right, right. He's doing it. She just ran 70 miles last night, so she's real tired. Wow. I'm ready to go back to bed. This is the I'll dog that saved the, the, that paid the mortgage and saved the house. And, and um, she was, she's the dog. She, she wanted to helped me come in second in the Cusco, and then I was third in the Iditarod, and all the mushers voted, yeah, and um, made her the Golden Harness winner for the year in the Iditarod. I was lucky to have her. Hmm. And she's finished Iditarod 10 times, and um, that's, the, that's the dog with the best attitude that I've ever known. You know, she's a good one. As old dogs retire from the team, they're replaced with a new batch of puppies, usually from the previous champions. We caught him. Ken and I were going back and forth with each other, having issues. I had to switch out leaders. I had a harness bust on me and my leader. I uh, put a tired dog in the sled about 24 miles from here. I'm not going to make a comment about Ray Reddington because he'll use it against me in the I did right. I put him in the sled. We, we went a lot faster. Now. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's Marlon. Okay. <laughs> yeah, when he said he had four wheel dogs, four dogs he needed to put in wheel, I said I'd leave two of them home because you're going to end up carrying a bunch of them. Are y'all ready for the race, Jeff? Uh, more or less. A long time and we're ready to get, get rolling and get this over with. I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the, the race is the easy part. Training all year, I think, is the hard part. It is a dog race and anything can happen. Yeah. Uh, last year I had a, a good lead here and uh, ended up finishing fifth going in after day two. Uh, yeah. Ended up finishing fifth. So. No. It can um, it can happen, but I got to get going to my chores here. Before yeah. The trip. You guys, got, if you come over here, let me show you these guys here. This is Jada. She's a sprinty little racy dog. She's actually going to do really well for me. Boo, her mom has finished. I did her uh, ten times straight. Never been dropped. She's got great bloodline. Uh, let's see, we got Wolfie and uh, Denali. They're both right here. These guys are both litter mates, and uh, that's their sister, their Ticona. She's laying down there, and then this is the father here, maybe boy. I'm going behind uh, Jamie. She's number 21. I'm number 22. So. You okay. have about 20 minutes, I guess. Okay. Yep. Right. Right. Two minute intervals. And... <laughs> 
<laughs> I got my name right in the middle there. See my little... I'll be worth money someday there. Right. Yeah. Dreaming Heman. Yeah, we'll see what happens. We're going to go have a good time and just go do what we do. And then at the end there, if they, they got a little more, then, hey, you know, we can always uh, open them up a little bit. And Right on. I where, want a prize. Where do you expect to open them up? Uh, probably the last 100 miles of the race. Okay. Probably on the inbound trail. Yep. The father to the so what's this you're hooking up right, right here? What's that? Uh, well, this up? is my neckline. Hooks to their collar. Gives them this much play. And it's got a reflective in there so I can see it at night. Okay. Which is really nice. And then their tug line is... This is what they're pulling from here. Okay. So... So which one next on the list here? Um, she, that one's getting Montana. Okay. She's the, the mom, dad. They're all related. Okay. We got a whole neat ge genealogy here. Montana with maybe. I'm going to hold off on Gadget and uh, Jada because they're... So I'll get Blackjack. my eyes before they freeze shut. Yeah. <laughs> That's the perils of having long eyelashes, I guess. I don't have that problem. She has frostbite and eyelashes? No, she no. can get frostbite if you keep oh. ice on it long enough. I thought it was great. It was better the than last year. are filled in really good. Awesome. I thought it was way better than last year. Close. <laughs> Trying to figure out panther. I think maybe puppets the fast. You can take panther. No, you can't switch dogs between teams. I can you only can't? pull from the. No, I can only pull from oh. the two. But I got I got puppet. Uh, at our house, oh. it was about 15 or 20 below, but it's like 35, 40 below in town. Tough, yeah, not a hard trail, a tough trail. A tough trail. Yeah, it was. It wasn't hard. It was uh, deep snow. Actually, we had a snowshoe in front of the team for. 30 or 40 miles at one section, so it was a slow go. He's the man of the speed, hard to we, keep up with. We did the best we could on the trails. Oh yeah, yeah. it's amazing. This guy's not only beating our butts, he's also putting in the trail. And and we, it's early in the season yeah. too. We call him a Red, Renaissance Reddington man. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome man. There's 60 Iditarod finishes just with three guys, and they're consistent top 20, top 10 guys, always. This uh, Alaskan excursion race, uh, I think it's going to be a really good race. I hope they keep doing it again. Uh, the trail is great. The distance is just perfect for this time of the year for training. And you're from Skagway? You got it. Gagway. Wow. <laughs> Ryan and Aaron Reddington, yeah. Reddington. They, got, uh, they have great dogs. Reddington's, I have to hand it to them. They, they are very hardcore people. They, they are keeping the sport alive by putting on a new race. Uh, Ryan told me, he says, oh, I'm going to start a new race. And I said, I'll be there. I don't care how far it is, what kind of money's there, if there's a bag of dog food at the finish line or a paycheck or nothing. I'll be there just to be part of it. About, uh, I believe, 15 below when we started here. Going into Ramey Smith's uh, thermometer he carries with him in his dog sled. Trail was great. It's really fast from the, the uh, before the loop, and then the loop at the end was a little soft. It slowed him down a little bit, but uh, you screamed when you got on that pack stuff. You know, you... dog racing for you. You bet, you bet. Can't I know. That little one. I hate looking behind me. I'm like, oh, every time I look back, there's someone there. <laughs> Today it was like two or three. <laughs> but, 
good experience. You know, every passing that we did, um, er everything went really great. Um, next year, uh -huh. he was ahead of. I passed him off the beginning. We did a lot of this, and you know, it was really good practice actually for all of us. We got good leaders. Yeah, no doubt about that. Fishing that we're doing here is uh, open to residents only. Alaskan residents are the only ones who can fish using the nets uh, doing this, which is uh, makes it real nice for people like us that live a subsistence lifestyle off of just the meat, you know, that we catch either by fishing or hunting. Make a statement. Okay. But look at the camera. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Done. Oh, no. Yeah, we're all done for today. Fish, fish are gone. We caught every fish that is possibly able to be caught. <laughs> gone. Tomorrow morning, we're back at it. At what day? What time? We're gonna be back out there three, three a.m. Wake up call, two o'clock. We're gonna go clamming. He's right. gonna show me how to <laughs> clean them out and everything. Yeah, it's gonna be a really good time. Because I've never done time. that before. That's a sockeye? Yep, sockeye, a red salmon. I was trying to ask you. Yeah, Dan says this one's hers. <laughs> Come on. Is that yours? <laughs> and what about Jim? Fish heads for the dogs. <laughs> the rest is for us. Yeah, these fish heads basically what we do is we freeze them all in individual packages and um, boil them in the wintertime for the dogs. These guys get uh, some of these fish heads which would go the, to waste. Um, not r r waste waste, but seagulls and animals would still get them. But uh, we're using every part of the animal. So we use the fish and everything else that comes along with them for the dogs. And everything else that gets gutted uh, is for us. And that's what we... That's what we eat for our family. Putting our fish in the coolers, make a layer of ice, you make a layer of ice, and then a layer of fish, and a layer of ice, and a layer of fish. And as long as you drain the water off it, the fish will last for about a week. It gives us time to get it home and get them processed. We're gonna go clamming tomorrow morning. Yeah. Um, are you cutting this up for tonight, or are you doing this for what? Right, right now. I'm gonna go cook it up. I'm You're gonna go, go cook it up? Yeah, I'm gonna go fry it right now. Look at the fillets we're gonna have for dinner hey, tonight. Oh, hey, Arnie. Sweet. I'll keep That's it. Linda. Yeah, he knows who I am. That's and this Linda. is skillet, and this is the um, packet. Okay. It's for um, salmon. How long do you normally cook it for? 
about maybe 10 minutes. 10 15, minutes? 10 minutes. It'll be better if you do it That's 10 minutes. It'll be real good. And what is it you're cooking, eating there? Red salmon fillets. No. Fresh. In there. Moose stew. Moose stew. <laughs> Moose stew. That looks just like salmon fillets. It's really <laughs> awesome. I love it. <laughs> you got to run the imagination. You, you, you got to run the imagination for days <laughs> cooking. Hey, yeah. I've been there for a lot of years. <laughs> no one knows it, and I'm still alive. <laughs> oh. Ouch. <laughs> This is me and Granite, and you don't usually get a chance to see us because I'm behind the camera. But this is m m my family. Right? Look. <laughs> Hi. Cool. <laughs> Do you hear what he said? Cool. Yeah, instead of just the outside crust. Because I can't really control. Fresh sockeye. I can't Yum. control the um, flame on this. Are you the chief cook then? No. Uh -huh. Who's mm -hmm. the chief cook? Um, Chris. Everybody. Any, everybody, anybody, everybody that has a specialty can cook their own. Yeah. Oh, a little bit more. I'm trying to steam it so it'll, you know, hold the heat. Your what? I'm steaming it so it'll hold the heat. So Good. it'll cook inside instead of just on the outside. My new waiters have a little hole. That's your brand new waders and they got a hole in it already? Brand new pair of waders, right out of the box. $250? Right, right out of the box. Shh. What's wrong with the dog? I don't know. Oh, she, she got into something. She's all swollen here. See that hand? It's like all cupping. Fishbone? Um, no, probably a little thistle. A um, little piece of grass that weaves it like a stickleback fish. You know how they... Or like a yeah. porcupine quill, and she ate it, and it's just getting festered up. See, like, there's, um, maybe right over here. But yeah, it's just teeny tiny wherever it was. Can you help with him? Yeah. All right. For the first time, so. Oh, right on. First thing you do, punch him right in the head. Punch him right on top of the head. Hit him again. There you go. That takes the fight out of him. And then you can untangle him. Oh. All right. Now. Okay. Stick your finger right up in there. You got him? All right. Hang on, you got him? Hang on to him hard, okay? We just eat fish and moose, and this is where we get our fish for the year, this and that. Fishing, fishing poles. The grandpas are the two grandpas are brothers. The two grandpas okay. are brothers. The yeah. two grandpas. My grandpa and her grandpa are brothers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Big, big family. We have a huge, huge family. It's, it's called the tribe. From White Mountain and from Nome. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's called the Erafluing Mute tribe. It's the Fish River tribe. And that's where we're uh, originally And where's from. that at? It's... Um, by Nome? By the mouth. It's the mouth of the Nekthik. This is ice that we made at the house. Freeze our jugs, milk jugs full of ice, and bring our own ice down. 
Donovan said they were catching doubles? Yeah. Four. Five. Six. Fourth of July is your tradition for putting nets together for yep. dip net season. Yep, everybody that's going fishing usually comes over. We sit around and talk about it. Because I mean, if you... what food everybody's going to bring and what they're going to do. And right. Mend all the nets, get everything all ready. Because you get one hole like this, right here. And you're missing a fish. And you're missing fish. Now put your hands in there. Every time. I mean, just this big of a hole and you're up the creek without a paddle, as the old phrase would say, right? right? Well, that's not good. We might have another one over here. I don't know. Yeah. Is that the same, I, same one? Still part of the same one. Two years at uh, commercial fishing setting it. Whoa! Is where I learned to do this. How it goes? Yeah. 25 for head of household and 10 for every additional family member. We don't buy meat from the store. We eat moose and fish. This is how we get our fish. Jeff and Heather are doing a juggling act right now because they're in the process of moving. They've been um, living in a handler's cabin on Linwood Fiedler's property for the last few seasons. So they've got their own place now and it's off the grid, so it's going to be a lot of work. We've been living here with my family, Heather and Granite and Dakota and us and the dogs for the last couple of years. Um, prior to that, I worked for Linwood. And I worked for him up on the glacier doing dog sled tours as a guide and uh, worked my way up into management up there. Um, did that for a few years. Jeff works with Ramey Smith, who is not only a dog musher, he is a master log home builder. So yeah, Jeff and I, are, we're good friends, you know. I know a lot of his, what he's got to deal with, ups and downs, and he's trying to move to a new place. His time's up for, for rental and He's finally being able to set down roots, and so it's a, a lot of work because he's got to build somewhere to live there. They don't have any power or well yet, nowhere to put the dogs. And he's trying to work full-time with me building log houses, and so right now Jeff's got a lot on his plate. It's August. we got to be moved in here in two weeks. we got to start training in two weeks. We need to start training right now. We need to start training right now because we got some dogs. We got some good dogs. They're antsy to go. We're ready to go. But, but they're know. mature, you know, and, and mature dogs, they don't need all this early season training because they've got, they've got it figured out. So we'll be all right. We'll be all right. We need as much training as we can get. I'm staying optimistic. 
So there's a heightened sense of urgency here because we're trying to get moved out of this handler's cabin that we've been nice enough to stay in for the circumstances that we've been in, but it is very cramped in space for the four of us. So we're here at Linwood's about ready to move out of here. Um, basically summer's coming, it's winding down and the Glacier employees that work for Linwood in the summer, they're coming down, they're going to come off. This is kind of the main base in the winter here at Linwood's. And uh, so his handlers, dog handlers, mushers, uh, they're going to be here living. They're, so basically someone's moving in here in a couple weeks right behind us. And we've been here for a couple years, our whole, our whole family. I mean, there's it's a lot more than just a single guy when you have two boys and, you know, man and wife and 25 dogs to, to boot. So They're moving into a metal workshop, basically, which they are going to make as their home until they can build a permanent dwelling. We're stuck right now because it's been raining, 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 and the ground is like soup. And we got to get gravel and we got to get the dog posts in, 30 of them. And we got to get the chains and the snaps and the dog houses. And so, much, I mean, just as much as it is important for us to get our place all set up so that we can live, it's also important for us to get all our dogs taken care of and them a place to live. So, um, all of that has to come together in the next week and a half, two weeks. Um, so we'll just see how everything plays out. After working with Ramey all day doing the same stuff, and then I could come home and work at my own place and do the same stuff. But it's all good. It's, I feel good. I feel strong. And I'm ready. I'm not afraid. I'm ready to conquer any challenge. I know he's trying to get ready for a race here pretty soon. Uh, the Alaska Excursions, it's a pretty fast sprint race. You know, it's challenging, bumpy trail. Got some top-end teams in it. And um, I ran it last year. And he's going to be using some of the same do or similar bloodline dogs to what I have in that ditter rod. So this is the kennel here. This is, these are our dogs. This is the, uh, the same bloodline from Ramey Smith that got second and beat uh, the all-time record in that rod this year. That's, that's a brother to his main leader. This is Bishop. And, um, yeah, he's going to be running Bishop's brother, Charlie, and basically this whole group, my I did a rod dogs, and, and they um, are all very closely related to Jeff's dogs. And so these guys here are uh, ready to go. They're uh, my heart and soul right here. And this year with uh, the Alaska Excursions race, a premier race up here in Alaska, that it's, uh, it's a race that's drawn some big names and some big money. And, you know, with the expense of having our kennel, you know, of, of our family members here, it's expensive. And uh, so there's got to be a purpose. And if you're going to race, it's got to be, you got to make a couple bucks and not hurt dogs in the process. So it's a fine line. But these dogs are, are very resilient. Their bloodlines with the Smiths has been proven year after year. And uh, so we got a lot to prove this year uh, in between moving and all the projects and working full time. Really what we want to do is we want to be running dogs, Heather and myself. Uh, so just got to get through all this, this hard work and all these projects. And we're going to start training these guys here. And uh, they're going to do good. As winter closes in, work only increases for Jeff and his wife Heather. With one cabin almost finished, they still have two remaining cabins to be built. And we have to get the back floor done and the plywood for the back floor for our bedrooms is underneath the tent. So we got to get the tent down today and take the pilot over. I got to do the floor tomorrow so we can set up the bunk beds. We're losing time. We're losing daylight. Every day is a, is a ticking time bomb because we're going to put, we wanted to put our house here this year. We wanted to have it, the, the spot cleared out, but that's not happening. 
because within two weeks here it's going to be it's get, we could have snow in a couple weeks here and uh, things are happening fast it's ridiculous I'm I mean we're gonna have to just start working all night long here it's, it's all happening every day one step at a time urgency that should be the name of a of a movie sense of urgency urgent yeah double urgent Rome wasn't built in a day is that what you mean? Rome wasn't built in a day but me and Heather we could build in probably two days <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, we make a good team no, we haven't done this all that fast <laughs> yeah this is taking forever yeah forever yeah. that's what the back of our rings say evidently so. And ever, and, and ever, ever, and <laughs> ever, and whatever. As long as you got an outhouse. As long as the boy keeps sleeping. <laughs> um, yeah, we couldn't afford the cabinets either, so just built, you know, stuff from around here with the wood to um, get this in. So we're pretty excited to have a sink. Um, we've done it before with just, you know, tubs on top of the counter so this is actually an upgrade for us to have the sink in the counter and uh, ready to go we got a wood stove and we got lots of wood going under the woodshed so wish you'd be all right but our yep main focus is going to be the dogs that's one thing we can't wait to get this done so we can start training dogs and um start working on our log sauna will be the number one priority to try to get done before winter as well. Get it all kind of prepped tonight and then we'll just haul it over in there in the morning before Alrighty. No. No. Yes. Okay. So three totes? Well, um, we might as well just leave them in there if they can't go anywhere. Okay. They feel they have a lot to be thankful for. For them, there is just as much joy in the journey as there is at the finish line. Challenged at every turn, like all wives and mothers here, devotes exhausting hours to the care of the dogs, food, and looking after her children. Hold it. Okay. Go. Good job, Jeff. Good job, Jeff. So, yeah, this is kind of our line. Go. Spider monkey, God! <laughs> they you understand. Big hole. Way hey. down there. Yeah, boy. Good job. Go, go. Hey. One of the reasons Jeff lives the bush life is that not everything is owned by someone else. You have wide open places. You have the wood for your fires. You have the meat. And you don't have to go out and buy everything you need to survive. When Jeff's not working with Ramey, he is busy working on his own cabin with his wife, Heather. Every log Jeff and Heather finish puts them one step closer to their goal. Today, Ramey and Jeff are busy hauling, peeling, and preparing logs for an upcoming log home project. Building in remote locations, as they do, can be quite challenging. But when all is said and done, also quite satisfying. 
uh, down you know, with the weather, but I know that we could do it. <laughs> There are few unsettled places left in the world. The great Alaskan wilderness is one of them. <laughs> 